LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has been highly anticipated for the past two years, and it's been nothing short of a hype-fueled journey. From theory videos discussing the possibilities of the stages for each episode, to speculation over which characters in the game would be playable, there's been a lot to discuss but so little revealed. Well, now that we have the game in our hands, and I'm sure most if not all of you have played it by now, we've all been able to answer our own questions regarding the game. One of the things I was looking forward to the most when this game was announced were the lightsaber duels. I knew they were introducing a more intricate dueling system than existed in the complete saga, which excited me and got me interested in seeing how the fights throughout the saga would play out. Ever since getting my hands on the game, I've been playing through the dual stages over and over again to come to my own conclusion regarding the best ones, and I think I have a list finally ready. I'm going to split this into a trilogy of videos, so today's video is going to be covering the PT, and then as time goes on we'll cover the OT and the ST naturally. I've never actually called them PT, OT, ST in my life until just now, so uh, <laughs> it's very new to me. I'm also only going to be covering the lightsaber duels in this video, ignoring the Django Fett boss fights throughout Attack of the Clones. Uh, I'm mainly doing this because not only would they be at the bottom of the list anyway, but they're also really short fights in comparison with not a lot going on. With all of that being said though, I've already taken up enough time. So let's get right into it. Coming in at 6th place is the Count Dooku duel from Attack of the Clones. Count Dooku is one of my favourite characters in Star Wars, but unfortunately, compared to the rest of the duels in the prequels, this one is the weakest for me. The fight starts out with you and your co-op teammate controlling the Jedi duo Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi as you fight Dooku on Genosis. Throughout the fight, the Count will jump to higher ground, and you'll have to find a way up to his platform to bring him down. The only way to do this is by ripping the pipes from the walls of the arena and climbing up with your lightsaber. Unfortunately, this is something that's not really covered too well in terms of co-op play because when ripping the pipes off of the wall, your teammate has their vision obstructed by the force interaction. This wouldn't be so bad if things weren't continuously happening off screen, however things continue to happen off screen such as your character getting hit by Genosian warriors. You're still in full control of your other character when this is happening, however you can't see anything that's going on which makes for a pretty clunky and annoying setback. Halfway through the fight, Obi-Wan gets taken out by Dooku and is swapped out by Master Yoda. My cock is riding on your head. My cock is bouncing on your head. <laughs> bouncing on, on your head, my cock is. <laughs> The fight continues as normal, ripping pipes off of the walls and killing some random Genosians alongside Dooku himself, well not killing him but you know what I mean, before the fight ends. Overall the pacing is okay and has a lot going for it, but there's just too many setbacks in this duel to rank it any higher on this list. Now unfortunately the count takes both of the bottom spots on this list, not for any reason other than the other duels being so amazing, but still disappointing nonetheless. The Dooku duel from Revenge of the Sith is a lot of fun to play and has you once again as Obi-Wan one and Anakin taking on the Count. This fight is a lot more straightforward than the other one, and most of the time just has you utilizing the combat mechanics rather than solving puzzles to continue the fight. Occasionally, Dooku will retreat to the higher levels of the throne room, and you'll have to fight some B2 battle droids that we barely see in real LEGO sets anymore, by the way, to get to him. Overall, it's a really simple fight. You dodge, you duck and weave, you cut Dooku's head off. It's a fun button mash. I like it a lot, but there's not much else to it, and there's not really much to say about it either. I do think it's more fun than the Attack of the Clones one, just because of the button mashing nature of it, it just feels a lot more straightforward. So it's it's going to take my number 5 spot, I think. Coming in at number 4 on the list is the Senate Showdown between Yoda and Darth Sidious. This was a duel that so many people wanted to be in the game since the early days of the complete saga. It's one of two Palpatine boss fights that people have been clamoring for since the game was announced. The other one being the Chancellor's arrest between Fisto, Mace and Palpatine, and that's just unfortunately a cutscene in this game. However, at least we get the Senate Chamber duel which is something. This fight is a lot of fun, and there's a bunch of interactivity for both players. Player 1 takes control of Yoda, who Sidious will relentlessly target no matter how much Player 2 tries to intervene, while Player 2 can assist by either punching Palpatine to death or putting a blaster bolt in the back of his skull. There are multiple terminals throughout the fight that Player 2 is going to need to interact with, however I don't feel as though it slows down the pace of the fight here. In the movie, the Senate showdown was all about Yoda trying to stop Palpatine, and I always got the impression that Sidious was trying to escape above all else, since he jumps for the door and tries to leave before Yoda stops him. In this fight, the characters explicitly state that they can't afford to let Palpatine get away, which is something that inevitably happens, but I like that this whole fight feels as though we're trying to stop him from escaping. It makes the panels make sense as we need to take breaks in the fight to chase him down, whereas in other fights it just doesn't make 
makes so much sense when the characters jump to higher ground and just wait for you to come and get them. Uh, but here it really does and I appreciate that a lot. With the intricate platforming around all of the senate pods and the mini brawls with the shock trooper squadrons throughout the fight, this duel ranks nicely in slot number 4. So now we're in the top 3 positions on the list. The final contenders are the Battle of the Heroes, the Battle on Utapau, and Duel of the Fates, which is conveniently what slots in here at number 3. This fight is a lot of fun, not just because it's the Duel of the Fates and who doesn't like the Duel of the Fates, but also because of the visuals, music, and the various gameplay elements in play here. The platforming in this fight is probably one of the best the game has to offer in its boss battles. The section in the plasma refinery complex is a lot of fun, activating elevators to access higher levels, cutting down battle droids all the while hunting and dueling maul in seamless transitions, and the accuracy to the movie here is stunning too, especially with the second player getting stuck behind Qui-Gon for a large chunk of the fight without even thinking about it. In my playthrough of this, my friend was getting stuck behind me in the laser wall section, which isn't the first time that's happened either. This fight is just a lot of fun to play, and getting to hear Duel of the Fates in the background all the while is even more satisfying. This is definitely a step in the right direction for bosses in LEGO games, and is a huge step up from the original Complete Saga Darth Maul boss fight we had back in 2007. Now we're down to the final two boss fights in the game, and this is a really tough decision to make. I enjoy both of these bosses almost equally as they're both really dynamic and heavily involve the second player. I'm going to have to let Bias take control here, but if I could, I'd rank these last two fights as a joint first. In second place is the Grievous Duel on Utapau with General Kenobi and Commander Cody. In the Complete Saga version of this fight, the second player had very little to participate in actually fighting General Grievous. However, here he plays a massive role and is actually more fun to play than Kenobi at times. He can fight Grievous all the same, albeit with his fists, and his gun means he can can take out the droids that attack you in waves a lot faster than Kenobi can if you aim for the droids' heads. Grievous himself will retreat to the higher levels of Utapau every time you slice off one of his arms, and you're both tasked with finding a way to bring him back down to the surface level so you can fight him again face to face. This is achieved multiple different ways, from either bringing in a vulture droid to knock him off of the railing, or calling him back up from the 212th Legion in an LAAT gunship to fire at Grievous. All the while you have an amazing Revenge of the Sith soundtrack in the background, and everything together culminates in one of the best bosses the game has to offer. The fight is one of the longer ones too, clocking in at least 10 minutes of a casual playthrough with exploration, so there's plenty for you to do here, unlike some of the other boss fights that are cut extremely short. Coming in at number 1 is the duel on Mustafar, between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, or Darth Vader, however you want to call it. This fight has always been my favourite thing in Star Wars from the moment I watched Revenge of the Sith, and it remains so to this day. So when I finally got to experience this level in my first playthrough, through, let me tell you, I was beyond excited to experience it. And before I dive into the meat of the level itself, let me just go over something quickly that actually slightly disappoints me about this level. I'm going to go off script here for a minute and just talk about how disappointing it is that the co-op in this Mustafar duel was removed. I remember playing with my friends when I was a lot younger on the Complete Saga, and throughout the level both characters were interchangeable, so if you loaded up the Darth Vader level as, say, Darth Maul and Mace Windu, or Kit Fisto and Palpatine or something, you could play the level as those two instead of Anakin and Obi-Wan, and you could do this whole fight with them two, with Battle of the Heroes playing in the background, and you'd help each other get throughout the level, and then at the end you'd have a big fight with each other, but here that's not the case. Here you have to fight Anakin, like you you play as R2, C-3PO, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it's just a little bit frustrating that we don't get that old charm of the 1v1 duel with a co-op teammate, you know? I feel like it would be so much better if we could switch between the two, or even if we could switch between Obi-Wan one and Anakin so we could pick which one we wanted to fight as uh, because I, I'm not gonna lie to you I always used to play the mission as Anakin. Anakin's my favorite character so I never used to want to play it as Obi-Wan. In the grand scheme of things it doesn't take too much away from the boss fight itself I just think it would have been nice to have the option of a co-op mode but it's not the end of the world and they did implement that in the Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker fight from Revenge of the Jedi Return of the Jedi. I called it Revenge of the Jedi but I'm not sure why I did that. So at least the mechanic isn't completely gone I just would have liked to see it here instead of there, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Anyways, let's get on with the video. So regardless to all of that, the fight with Anakin as an AI is fun in itself, and allows for another team-up battle with you taking on the role of Obi-Wan Kenobi, R2-D2, and C-3PO as you chase Anakin through the Mustafar mining complex. One thing to note about this fight is how accurate the setting is to the movie. Literally every section is basically spot on to how the environment looks in Revenge of the Sith, and you follow the choreography almost to a T. You take on Anakin in various sections of the mining complex, including the main room, 
until you follow him out onto the balcony. Once there, you follow him along the balcony after battering him for a minute, and you'll be kicked into the role of the droids as you help Obi-Wan escape a saber lockup on a tight beam. Once done, Anakin and Obi-Wan will jump down and fight on the part of the mining complex that ends up snapping off and floating along the lava river. Uh, I actually forgot the name of it, so please forgive me. This thing that's on screen now, whatever this is, someone tell me the name of this. I don't remember the name of this. It's really fun to get to fight Anakin all over Mustafar just like in the movie, and I can't stress that enough. Enough. The care and attention to detail in the surroundings is beyond what I could have asked for, and I really like that. The one thing I don't like about this level though is that during the part that follows this, the second player or whoever controls R2 and C3PO are stuck watching Obi-Wan fight Anakin, and then scale the metal scaffolding in the lava river while doing nothing of note themselves. You're stuck standing on floating mining droids while the other player gets to indulge in all the action. I don't mind not being able to play as Anakin, however I think it would have been nice to be able to still fight as a duo against him at all times, rather than isolate the other two characters. I understand this level was more so designed to be a one player endeavor though, and that's okay. I just wish it had the co-op elements from Complete Saga where you're both engaged in the action at the same time rather than separately. The fight then moves on to the droid and platform along the riverbed as the music picks up in intensity and we move on to the final phase of the level. This part is actually more beneficially played as the droids in my opinion as you don't spend a lot of this final part of the fight as Obi-Wan. You'll spend most of your time trying to help Obi-Wan as you electrocute platforms that Anakin is standing on to give Kenobi the upper hand. Once that's done you spend one final scene next to the high ground and a saber lock with Vader until you finally get the iconic scene play out in front of you. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! You are the chosen one! I hate you! There's something about this game that keeps me replaying the boss levels the same way I did back on the complete saga. I'd been waiting for this game for two whole years, and nothing about it let me down. Besides maybe the lack of Mustafar co-op. But you can do that in free play if you want to, so I'm not completely bummed out about it. This game retains the magic of the complete saga while adding entirely new elements to the game like the space combat and the new feature of being able to jump between planets, almost seamlessly as well. And if you're playing on a system like a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, you'll find the loading times between planets completely seamless, and nothing feels like it takes too long to load up. Even loading up levels is almost instant which is a joy if you like the quick paced style gameplay. While you're in free play as well, you can also head to the locations the missions were located in the different episodes in the linear story type gameplay. So you could travel all the way to Mustafar, start the Mustafar boss fight almost instantly, and then when you're done with it, you're booted back into free play in the, the blink of an eye. It's, it's crazy. But with all that being said, those are the prequel boss fights from Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga ranked from worst to best. Uh, none of these are bad, I don't think. I'm pretty much in leagues with them all being really, really fun to play. So this was quite a hard list to rank, um, to, to put together, but we got there in the end. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to take up too much of your time. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for part two and three, where I'll be ranking the original trilogy's boss battles alongside the sequel trilogy's boss battles. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. So I really hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one. Can you be? I want your cock in my <laughs> <laughs>